Hey, Carolyn. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm finally here after like missing the last two, I think. <laughs> hey, we, we kept changing the time on you, so. It's, uh, the movie, great movie meeting. Oh my gosh, I'm just trying to like get my get my life together. <laughs> uh, I'm like about to have instant noodles for lunch, so you're fine. <laughs> what are you having for lunch? Instant noodles, cause like mm. uh, I don't know, it's just so busy right now. How about um, lunch? Lunch yeah. sounds great. It's four o'clock here. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I think Scott Fulton is going to join and see if he's online. God, today's the 21st. What happened in July? There's no summer. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Do you want to write nap on the agenda? Was that nap and instant noodles? <laughs> okay. Um, hello, everyone. I guess we're recorded. This is awkward because I've already started. Welcome to SIG Contributor Strategy, our contributor growth working group for July 21st, 2020. Um, post our notes here in chat. I know it's just the two of us, but I'm going to take this very seriously. <laughs> there we go. Um, so governance is something that I really liked. Um, Josh made like a content tracking of all the things that we'd like to do as a working group, uh, content we like to make. So I made kind of kicked off an issue for this, but I'm hoping we can kind of brainstorm other pieces of content that we'd like to create here in this issue right now. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, I just got out of the uh, two hours of meeting, so I am going to go quickly get a beverage and then I'll be uh, right back. Sorry. Right. So I just started writing down some of the things that I know, you know, Always has to be in a, in a repo. We also now finally have a project templates repository, which is pretty cool. I think most of the things that this working group creates is gonna end up here. Okay. Uh, which is pretty exciting. So let me link that here as well.
Yeah, we still need to make this a, a template repository, but uh, that's the idea is that it should be like this one right here, for example, where you can say use this template and uh, it'll then kick you off into making a new repository from it. Oh, cool. Okay. That's the idea. Um, so we have contributing pretty far along. I think that's pretty much right to the point where I can submit this as a, a PR. I know I've said that a couple times, but now we have the repo, so um, I should be able to do that this week. Uh, I started a contribution ladder. Um, I think we have a whole bunch of examples um, ready for people to start working that template. Oops. I agreed with your comment and then it didn't didn't take your comment. There you go. There you go. Um, so I don't know if there's more um, but the idea is then hopefully we can have people start working on pieces of content instead of all of us working on one at a time. Yeah. Um, uh, so we can make a little bit more progress as we keep chugging along on these things. Is your contribution ladder template supposed to be like the same as like the owner's one, the owner's file? Or would that still be separate? Um, let me, so it'd be different from the owner's file. So okay. There's a whole bunch of different examples. The idea is that it, it lays out what are possible roles. Yeah. And then how to how to get it and what are the responsibilities and things like that. So here are a couple. Right. More. Okay. Yeah, like here's one from OpenStack. They kind of tell you like what's it like to be a team lead, how do you get it? And what do you have to do to keep it? Things like that. Um, so owners, it's interesting. Where would we, ex we should have an, I mean, not everyone uses owner's files. Do you think we should encourage them to do that? Um, I mean, yeah, I think we probably just want to like put as much out there, right? And like not necessarily expect everyone to use everything we provide as a template, but like if they need it. Okay. Because um, um, I feel like the owner's file is like the quickest way to find like the stakeholders when are, if like if and when I need something. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty. So when it comes to specific uh, files, like I feel like one of the things to go back to is um, what the role of this specific working group is um, and, and like make sure that lines up. Sorry, I also have a migraine, so I'm all like, oh. my words may not make sense at all. So, so when we talk about owner's file, like if I think about contributor growth, we're talking about sustainably growing the contributor base. Oh, and, this is like the templates, like conversation, right? And I think like this would, I don't know, I guess like this would still be a, resource to help people early on? I don't know. I get what you're saying, though. No, um, it is. Like, if I look at number one goal, provide best practices and resources for managing and interacting with contributors to CNCF projects, that fits right in there. So it's because it, the, th the, the fine coloring I think about is like, what is the owner's file for? And we're talking about stakeholders and like that the project has specific uh, stakeholders that are documented and how to contact people. 
Uh, and maybe the owner's file is one of those things that we include as a template. I don't think everybody uses it though. Can I clarify real quick, two things? Owner's file means something specific in GitHub, doesn't it? it it's who gets pinged to review. Pinged for review and something else, isn't it? What's the something else? <coughs> Someone from each file needs to sign off. Hi, it's Josh. Hey, hey um, good to see you here. <laughs> yeah, so the other requirement is within GitHub, enforced by Prow, uh, not within GitHub, within Kubernetes, enforced by Prow, if you are in a specific owner's file, um, then some one who is an approver from that file needs to sign off um, on any change that touches that directory. You follow me? Is that so a GitHub it. thing or a Kubernetes thing? That's a Kubernetes thing. Okay. <coughs> so Jennifer, the um, the and something else that you were referring to, like how to contact people, etc., was that something beyond approval or? I was thinking of it as like people you would like, like if you, what information you get out of the owner's file. And so if I know, if I look, and, and maybe this is just my hack, if there is an owner's file, if there are sub projects uh, or sub directories inside of it, say for example, documentation, and someone is specifically assigned to that area, I know I can talk to that person about stuff. Or if it's like, it's just everything is everybody, then it's just like a grab bag. Mm -hmm. so. But as far as just making a template repository, um, I think this is something that we've said before the governance and contributor growth are going to have overlap. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think governance overlaps with owner's file a lot. We're just suggesting for templates that we should have an owner's file. Um, what we put in it as far as the template content and suggestion for what people should put in there, or whatever, whatever the text ends up being in there, other than maybe saying how to use it. Um, will probably be a collaborative effort between the two working groups. I would, tend to, I would tend to see the information on the governance portion of things is how do you decide who gets to be an owner? Yeah. And um, I wouldn't see that going into the owner's file template itself. Okay. Like because the who gets to be an owner rules is going to be a public document for the project. So that would be in contributors.md or governance.md or whatever. Okay. Rather than being in the actual owner's file. That's the other file that we're missing here is a governance.md, which is covered by the governance working group. Yeah, uh, there's going to be a lot of back and forth here because for projects that actually create actual role documentation, the yeah. contributor growth portion of roles is kind of inseparable from the governance portion of roles. So it's just going to be shared documents. Yeah. Should I not list things out like that? The, this? Should I just talk about things that are going to be handled by yeah. us then? OK. No, I, either way, you can put or, that in there. It's fine. OK. Just so we like, are aware yeah. that it's going to go in the templates or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's helpful to say like, like we we did think about this and we did categorize it as going to this other working group. Okay, as long as we're cool with it, I just wanna make sure I'm not making more work for people, but I don't want people to think like, why did we forget X is all. Um, uh, are there other major files that we wanna think about at the beginning for what should go in the template repo? Here, let me put in previews, it's easier to see. A lot of this was populated from our discussion on Thursday. 
from SIG conservator strategy. Is it wrong to say that there should be a code guidelines? Wouldn't it be in contributing that MD? Not necessarily at all. So, do you mean like, uh, like, because we don't have it in ours, in our template? I'm, and most I'm, of the examples we had decided not to put that type of stuff in there contributing either. So when you say code guidelines. I feel like that helps new contributors because like instead of like it, 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 there's so much ex assumptions we have them in the shop community like here's our expectations of code it, we and like it follow these practices. Um, we even provided like cook style. So like if you run cook style against your repository, it would give you the recommendations about the specific oh, things that we would have. This is in the contributing. One second, let me follow up. Let me, let me see if this matches what you're talking about. Um, it is and it isn't. So the PR checklist. I feel like the checklist is like a, a like a shorter thing, and the guidelines might be um, like I don't know. It so might if you be had linting or any specific things that we're going to be that the code would be vetted against. So if we were going to run style checks, linting, anything, it should be yeah. listed out. But it's very specific to the project. Yes, like it's not something, this is not something I think we can tell people this is what it should look like, but it should be something that exists. Yeah. Are you suggesting it be called out differently in the contributing or it should be a separate document? Um, It could be either a separate document or an additional uh, header number two. Like it's separate from pull request checklist. I mean, maybe. I'm just trying to, I don't think we need to like do the, the changes here. I'm just trying to understand if I should add a separate document to our checklist here, or if we should add a task to edit the contributing template more. I think edit, edit the, add a task for editing the contributing template. Okay. And you can uh, assign that one to me if you want. There you go. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> uh, would you call it a style? No. Code, uh, coding yeah. guidelines or something. Okay, thanks. Um, were there any other um, files? I just saw like on the Envoy repo that they have a file for like the DCO stuff. Yeah. So that's in contributing, I think. Um, no, where's my where to go? Yeah, we explain how to sign your commits for a DCO or for a CLA. Okay. I made some edits. I don't know if you saw the these in the contributing template. At least I thought I did. Oops, I'm sorry. I may have missed it. It's been a rough week. Now I'm wondering if I actually, can you link the, so, oh no, yeah. Here Do you it see is. me sharing the document? Yeah, I see you sharing it. Yeah. I was yeah. making sure. Oh yeah, I think it, it's, I think it shows up as an, I, I am an anonymous user making edits when I made an edit. Oh. Weird. 
Um, but it, so like it shows my comment as me. The Ruby cycle. Yeah, I see your comment here. Um, what the release cycle looks like. Uh, so what did I mean by this? Um, so, so you have, this is out of scope, how to cut a release. So like, that's a maintainer guide, but the, what is the release cycle shows what, um, so, so if I write a pull request, like if I write some code, I make a pull request, does it go in immediately and it's released? Or is it batched up and then a new release is cut? And so like what the release cycle is, is just here's how we release stuff. Here's like the phases of the release. And I don't know if that's covered somewhere in here. I mean, when I reviewed it, didn't feel like it was covered in here. I think there's, there's, there's two things. One is in general, how do we version? What's our release strategy? Mm -hmm. um, which I think a lot of projects have to answer when they submit to CNCF actually. Like, or at least it used to be part of the, the template. You had to explain your release strategy um, or your versioning strategy. Uh, but for, for that very specific scenario you gave, um basically like will this immediately get <laughs> released or will it get batched up some of that's really specific i think to one of the sections we have which is the life cycle right that'd be a great that's question the life cycle of the pull requests like when does my pull request get maybe that maybe that does cover it like well, we don't we don't ask it do we we don't we don't have a, a bullet point for it though yet yeah. Right? Or maybe not my. What in the world? Uh, uh. I'm going to add a, a task instead for this. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, split people's time off just writing stuff. Um, cool. Because like depending on uh, what what type of change it is, it may get hot fixed. It, it may end up batched. It may go really quickly. I mean, I, I know like on the projects I'm on, uh, it, like not everything's like Kubernetes where it just goes pretty regularly. Um, Sorry. I feel like the to do might, we might forget what to do means. Oh, that's why I put the comments on top of it. That's fine. Oh. It's okay. I'm sorry. I just want to avoid spending all of our time wordsmithing because yeah. I was trying to make this a little, a little higher level so you can make sure to get. I'm sorry. I don't know. That's fine. Just the comments. That's okay. Um, are there any other templates? that we were hoping to create or maybe uh, advisories to go along with them to help people understand. I think we were calling out a couple of them in the comments that we wanted to make along with them. Um, just going through our comments right now, make sure we didn't identify any. Pull request life cycle that explains philosophy, yeah. I feel in the reviewing guidelines, which is out of scope, there is also a dealing with uh, 
dealing with the the borderlines of toxic uh, contributions. I just want to say that out loud. They might not violate the the word of the code of conduct, but they violate the spirit of a code of conduct or like community values. Yeah, that was something we put in here is that we wanted to one, just talk about more than just the code of conduct. We wanted to talk about community values in general, defining the values of the community. Do we actually put that in there? No, it was a comment that we wanted to do this. Oh, okay, cool. Sorry, I read this before the meeting and I remember we, we it's somewhere in here. We wanted to talk, it was in the, it was our last meeting. Um, we wanted to define the community values. Um, and then as part of this, and this was just as an advisory like supplemental paper or something, not as a template. We want to talk about community values like beyond a code of conduct. Because I think CNCF kind of has a standard code of conduct, the um, contributor covenant. Um, and so that I think that really flows in well with what you're saying, which is how to uh how to like foster those values and um deal with people who really are hurting the community essentially through towing a line to the code of conduct maybe to the strict letter but are, are definitely not following the values, you know? Uh, it's really hard, by the way, to write about some of this stuff um, and not end up immediately drawing like moths to the flame people who want to engage in very bad faith with whatever you just wrote, by the way. So when we write something like this, expect engagement from people negative engagement just engagement. so you know what engagement <laughs> yeah I'm just, I'm just saying yes it's okay i'm i'm ready for a new open ssl that the, the whole not conversation they had it's fine it's all good Okay. That one is almost something that it'd be interesting to redirect to a, a smaller, safer place to initially have the conversations to the maintainer circle. By the way, just to, to, to get people thinking about it and, and collect uh, uh, people's uh, anonymous, anonymized uh, experiences on how, how to deal with these things, you know. It's tricky, it's really tricky, just speaking from having been on a couple of code of conduct committees. Um, are there any other things that maybe we'd like to start thinking about? I mean, we have a whole bunch here um, that we could just start working on, but I just wanna make sure that we kinda took time to think about it before then we just went off and write and we don't stop to then think about what else we wanted to write about. I think there's a big chunk and it's, it, it, it's very meaty. I think there's areas where we can build off on and we might realize, but I think in the moment, this is like the big high level uh, overview. Okay. Um, yeah, I think this is, this is almost maybe a larger one for a series uh, on mentoring or uh, like fostering 
uh, people through the contributor ladder. Right? Um, yeah. It, we oh. could get there's so much work in that and the and just the good first issue and help wanted like really doing good first issues that would be magical yeah that, that's the content that i was talking about that's currently uh that i wrote for kubernetes that i'd like to uh contribute up higher to the cncf um and then if we could expand on it and get more people's perspectives and like I said, make it into a more of a series or collection of uh, people's thoughts. That'd be really, really great. Um, are people interested maybe in taking on a couple of these? Like I'll put my name next to getting the contributor, the contributing guide past the finish line. Um, is anyone else able to say that they can spend you know, an hour to, to try to start or get any of these going. Can you pair with me on some? <laughs> Sorry, Karen? Can you pair with me on some? I haven't done this before, so I'm happy to help, but I also like want to like put it out there that I don't totally know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the contribution ladder would be the the one next that we're trying to get get rolling uh, i will pair with karen okay sounds good okay that'd be great and work with karen on something <laughs> how come karen i can never tag you are you okay. is can that you, your name on is that right i karen, think no it's karen h2 but it didn't come up either so i think you need to accept your invite to the organization or something. I, I thought I did that. And then maybe when I try to do it, my invite expired. And I think I pinged Chris and I don't know. Um, let me, let me dig up some emails and follow up on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I put you on code of conduct. Okay. Ah, 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 ah. No. Just, okay. Um, let me, let me do this one and I'm going to, Default it uh, to uh, the CNCF one. Just so I actually saw people submitting to Sandbox to CNCF uh, right now to this day, getting uh, rejected because they did not have a code of conduct. So this is an easy one that we can help people with. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I don't want to oversubscribe people. So I think we'll just stop right there and just be like, that is enough. Okay. And we'll just keep slowly working on it. We, do we have a specific area that like we have a project place we're doing this out that's in GitHub versus is it all Google Docs? Um, so we can do what we want. Uh, we wanted to avoid putting things into the templates repository before we're finished with them. So by the time they're committed, it should be safe for people to clone and use. OK? Mm -hmm. um, so I was leaning towards using the Google Doc and then making sure that people had edit rights. I was, that's why I was like messaging people and asking them for their uh, email addresses so they could edit uh, and be able to put changes in themselves. I apologize if I missed anyone, so please let me know if I, if I made a mistake on that. Um, but we also have the option of submitting PRs to SIG contributor strategy, and maybe just put it in a folder for our working group. We have a, a working group folder. Um, and I think it would be fine if we put our drafts in there while we're working on it. We'd probably like just make a drafts folder. If, if that's 
easier for people to manage. I think it's kind of more difficult though to leave comments and kind of really uh, churn on things as we have, but I'll let people decide how they, they find it easier to collaborate asynchronously. Um, I was more, I was thinking for like the issue templates. Can you explain what, is there something special about the issue templates? Oh, I just wanted to make the sample issue templates and like iterate there versus having a separate Google Doc for them, but maybe it's fine. It's probably fine. I'm feeling really dense. Do you mean maybe it'd be easier to do it in a GitHub repo because you can see them and trust them? Yeah, see how they like how they look. They actually look in the repo because you know how sometimes like the check yeah. boxes and you're using the different markdown versus uh, uh, versus it's not just text. Yeah, you know what I would encourage. Um, let's just can we just make a repo that <laughs> just like put stuff in there. Uh, and give people permissions on it, whoever's collaborating on it. And then when it's ready, we'll put it in the template repo. Cool. Does that seem okay? Seems fine to me. I'm just, yeah, that's kind of where I was going there. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we, yeah I see why that's special. Um, they're a little different. Um, sorry, it took me a minute to really understand why that was different. Um, yeah. Cool. Josh, is there anything special that we should be collaborating with governance on right now that we need to be aware of or doing better? Um, <laughs> no, I mean, a lot of this stuff on the template repo, we're also going to want to put stuff on. Yeah. So <clears throat> obviously the sooner you can push drafts, the better, because then we can start adding things to them. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, um, I did actually have a question for you about the template repo. Sure, yeah. So this came up in our meeting this morning. Mm -hmm. And so the problem is that some things we want to template don't fit easily within a kind of fill in the blank format. Like mm -hmm. particularly things like governance structures mm -hmm. where it's like, if you're gonna have self-selecting maintainers, then you want something kind of like this. If you're gonna have elections, then here's this long document, uh, you know, um, with examples of how to run elections. Um, where I'm not sure that putting it all in one file where you say select the portion that applies to you is really going to work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that there are a few, a couple areas like that, mainly governance structure, where yeah. it feels like we actually need to have multiple files and sure. have them choose the file that applies to them. And I just wasn't sure how to structure that. I think that makes a lot of sense. When you have a couple of files called like governance foo, governance dash bar, governance dash whatever, and then a main governance that's like, you need to pick one and delete the others or something along those lines where we give them instructions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go with whatever makes sense. Uh, we haven't hit yeah. something that was that long form yet. Yeah, well, it, would, it came up because we were looking at advice around how to structure your leadership selection. Yeah. And it was like, okay, an actual template for this is not going to be small. Yeah. Um, the, um, so, um, the, um, uh, you know, may come up for other things. I'm not sure what though. You know, that, that makes sense. We haven't had to have like the largest, uh, you know, either or for us has been DCO versus CLA. Um, we, we were still like small enough that we were able to just have people delete which one they didn't want to use. Um, but for something like that, I, I think separate files makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. the, um, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's it, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of sort of the same material. Cause I mean, one of the things I want to keep in mind here is for the smaller projects, they're kind of want, going to want to have, well, I mean, they're required by the CNCF rules to split things among like two or three documents, but mm -hmm. they're going to want to have everything within those two or three documents mm -hmm. um, because their stuff is just not that complicated. Yeah. Um, the, um, I mean, honestly, I just, we just did the one for operator framework and 
we we did all our drafts as one document because it was only three and a half pages long. Mm -hmm. And then we broke it up into the required CNCF files. So. Oh, CNCF required it as separate files. CNCF requires you specifically to have a contributing.md file or analog mm -hmm. and a governance.md file or analog. Okay. Okay. Can I peek at what you did? You said you went through this for operator framework? Did this, is this like live somewhere in a repo I can look at? Um, I'm not sure it's been, I, <coughs> it should be, um, at least yeah. as a PR. Um, do, 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 do. I'll have to find it though. Okay. Because it started out as a Google Doc. The, um, oh, okay. And um, yeah. so, because Operators Framework just got accepted into Sandbox. Yeah. So they now have to do all their stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. I was just curious, mostly yeah. just for like a, an example of what someone has just gone through, like going through the process yeah. themselves. I was just curious because I want to ma match it up with the templates yeah. we started doing and be like, yeah. are we matching reality? You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. So let me, let, me find, let me find the actual public GitHub version then. Yeah. Okay. Great. That'd be really helpful. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, you know, this is really all we have on the agenda for today. Um, I think everyone who wanted some content assigned to them has something assigned. Um, so let me know if there's anything I can help with. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.